So this is a uh, solution to a problem that you guys would have seen on your tips. I've uh, dumbed it down a little bit or, or simplified it a little bit in terms of how the problem is presented. And we're going to go right from the beginning to the end. So the situation is you've got a mass M sitting on a frictionless ramp. So this surface here has zero friction and it slides down the ramp. It's released, it slides down to starting from rest. When it gets down to this point here, it reaches a horizontal surface, which has a coefficient of friction. I'm just gonna leave it as mu, not call it mu k, but it would be mu k. And the question is, how far along the horizontal surface will it slide before it comes to a complete stop? So some things that we need to kind of identify here. <clears throat> First, we have a V1 equals zero here, or V0, I'm gonna call that V0. V0 equals zero, so the moment it's released, it has no speed. It's going to slide down the ramp. So in this position, it's got an accelerated motion, and it's gonna reach this point here, at which point it has zero gravitational potential energy, and it's no longer accelerating in the positive direction, in the direction it's moving. Then, it's going to slide, and we're gonna call that, by the way, V1. So that's going to be the beginning of our horizontal motion. Then it's going to slide whatever distance horizontally until it reaches a stop, at which point V2 is going to be equal to zero. So that's kind of the situation we have. I'm going to tackle this with the seven step method. <clears throat> I've shrunk the, the, the picture down a little bit and we're going to identify a few things that we should know. So seven step method, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, what are we solving for? We're looking for D in this stack case. We're not going to worry about significant digits because this is an algebraic solution. The other thing we have, another thing we have to do is understand the concept, which I've drawn on the previous picture. And uh, I, on the next slide, I have that drawn out again. So we're not going to worry about it too much. But I also say, have to tell you, we, we are also are going to have some equations. We're going to have some formulas we're going to need to use to work some of these things out. <clears throat> now, the horizontal one, we have a V1, we have a V2, because that's going to be zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're solving for a distance, and we're either going to need an A or a T, acceleration or a time. Well, given that we have a force, and therefore a net force, we're probably going to want acceleration. So we're going to solve for acceleration, so this is going to be equation five. With a force of a net force part portion to it. This section here also accelerating. We have a v1 equals or a v0 equals zero, and we have an acceleration. We're looking for a v2 because we're going to need to know what speed it's doing here in order to figure out how far it's going to get. And of course, we do have a means of getting a distance right here because we have a sign uh, a sign ratio with the triangle. So this distance here. The, the distance down the ramp, D, is our hypotenuse. The height is our opposite angle. So here are the formulas we're going to need. F net equals MA. We're going to need, uh, let's do it this way, V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2AD. And if we want, we can call this A, since we're doing, using kind of a generic version of the equation right now, and we'll substitute in our values for V later. We have those two equations, and we also have the sine ratio. Sine theta is opposite over adjacent. So on this next slide, <clears throat> I've identified these things a little more clearly. For example, right here, I identified the hypotenuse is D naught, and the height is H, so that cleared that up. And I also rearrange the other two equations to look for the value that I'm actually looking for. And this should be v squared here, sorry. So for the first part, when it's coming down the ramp, that's the equation we're going to work with. For the second part, when it's going across, we're looking for the distance. So that's the equation we're going to work with. And here's how we're going to get our acceleration. It's going to be a equals f net over m. All right, so that's <clears throat> the setup for this problem. Now, algebraic solution to this, and I'll put that little squared here again so I don't miss out. So we're solving for the distance, so we're gonna use this equation right here, <clears throat> and that should be a one. 
So, right? We're going to use that equation right there. So we're going to start directly under what we're solving for, and we're going to say equals v2 squared. Now v2 is equal to zero, so that's going to disappear. So we're going to have negative v1 squared over 2a. Okay. Now, in this equation, in this portion, we don't know either v1 or a yet. So I'm going to do v1 first. v1 <clears throat> is going to look like this. We're solving using this equation. And again, v0 is 0. And we're all going to use this to get our acceleration. So we're going to say v1 squared is equal to 2ad which is equal to, and I'm going to have to squeeze things a little bit, v1 squared is equal to 2 times f net over m times d. And keep going, coming down, we're going to have 2. And f net is going to be the sine component of gravity. Right, the x version of gravity. So a free body diagram to show that, probably could have done this earlier, is on that inclined plane, when we change the angle, gravity is like this. So the x component of gravity, fg x, is equal to um, fg or mg times sine of theta. Okay, and uh, you can look at previous examples for it to see how that works. So f net <coughs> is going to be FGX, because there's no other force acting on it down the ramp here. So we're going to say mg sine theta. And then to turn that into acceleration, we have to divide by mass. And the distance we've established is h over sine theta. So there's some cancellations we can do right here. We can say mass divided by mass disappears. Sine theta divided by sine theta disappears, and we're left with 2gh for v squared. So, and uh, if you, you've done conservation of energy at this point, you'll see that that's actually a result that you get from conservation of energy as well. <clears throat> now, the acceleration on the horizontal part, actually, let's duplicate this slide quickly. And I can shrink a bunch of these things and get them a little out of the way. So we'll take all this stuff right here and shrink it. We know that V1 is equal to 2GH. Now the bottom half, the bottom part, I'll do that in red. <clears throat> We're solving for A. A is going to be F net over M. And the net force when we're coming along the horizontal surface here is just going to be the friction force acting backwards. So free body diagram for that, FF acting backwards, that's it. And FF, in this case, because it's horizontal, is going to be equal to mu times the normal force, which is just mg, <clears throat> because it's counteracting the, the gravitational force in this case. So mu mg is going to go here. We've got the net force is mu mg. <clears throat> divided by the mass to get acceleration, which is just mu g. So the final equation we get, coming down here, we get v squared. Unfortunately, that's a v squared there too. <clears throat> so we have negative 2gh on the top. And on the bottom, this is acceleration, but it's backwards, right? Because up here we showed it as going the opposite direction from the direction of motion. So it's a negative acceleration. So we're going to say divided by mu g. Uh, sorry, <clears throat> there's a 2 there. All right. I shouldn't have put that arrow in. So looking at this equation, we've got negative 2 divided by negative 2. So those two disappear. And we've got g divided by g. And those two disappear. And our final answer is that the distance equals the height of the ramp over the coefficient of friction. And that, my friends, is why you should always solve the algebra first.